Good afternoon, Tuscaloosa, Internet World, West Alabama. Let's keep it rolling here on the Joe Gaither Show right here on Bama Central and BamaCentral.com. We're now going to head over to Cowbell Corner and CowbellCorner.com to talk a little Mississippi State as we don't just cover the Alabama Crimson Tide. We're going to cover Mississippi State just a little bit as well as the Mississippi State Bulldogs made some news this past week in the football realm. We're going to welcome on Kinsey Brandenburg of Cowbell Corner. You can follow her at Kensington Brand 2 on the X machine, on the Twitter machine. She's covering all things Mississippi State football, basketball, softball, baseball, everything Mississippi State for Cowbell Corner. You can follow her again at Kensington Brand 2 on the X machine. Kenzie, uh, y'all got a big Thanksgiving treat. New coach in Stark Vegas. How are we feeling over there in Bulldog land? Yes, we are so excited to have a brand new head coach welcoming on Jeff Levy has been absolutely exciting, not just for the team, but also for the coaching staff and for the fans. It was very exciting. Such a great turnout to welcome him to Starkville. Yeah, absolutely. So Jeff Levy gets his first head coaching opportunity here in uh, Starkville, here at Mississippi State. What's different? What's different uh, with this guy? Because... Uh, many of my Mississippi State friends said, Joe, we're doing the same exact thing, bringing in a guy with no experience. What in the world? What's different about Jeff Levy than Zach Arnett? I think with Jeff Lebby, a lot of what our issues were this past season was on the offensive side. And while our defense was great, uh, Zach Arnett knew that, and he led the defense to do pretty well, but our offense just was not in it. And um, so having Jeff Lebby come in with – experience on more of the offensive side that's really going to help us especially since um, Oklahoma where he was from before they were 10 and 2 this season which is absolutely amazing and so having Levy come in and help us on the offensive side is going to be what really will help us improve next season all right so what does the uh, Mississippi State fans how do they feel about Ole Miss and about Tennessee, not necessarily the programs because obviously the hatred's there for Ole Miss, but the way that football has been played at Tennessee and the way that football has been played at Ole Miss over the last handful of years because there's a lot of Tennessee and Ole Miss ties with Jeff Levy. You're going to start seeing some of that influence in the uh, Starkville, in the, in the Bulldogs program here going forward. What's the take on, okay, we're going to have a little Josh Heupel offense from Tennessee. We'll have a little Lane Kiffin offense from Ole Miss. They're all going to manifest themselves in Jeff Levy. Well, with Jeff Levy, what we'll see is that he has the experience having been at Ole Miss before. And while the team is not the same as it was um, many years ago when he coached there, we'll see that maybe he still knows some of their strategy, some of their tricks. And so we'll, we may even have a leg up on Ole Miss with him having experience there before. With Tennessee, I mean, I don't think our conference schedule has been released yet. So we may not even see Tennessee on our schedule. But if we do, then what we really need is to have have that offense so that we can take on Tennessee since they've been doing pretty well this season as well. Well, yeah, you see Jeff Levy, he coached under Jeff Heip, uh, Josh Heupel, the Tennessee head coach, when they were at UCF together. And then obviously he spent some time at Ole Miss with, with, with Lane Kiffin as offensive coordinator. Is there any concern over we're giving a guy who's never been in control, control of an SEC program? There was a little bit of a similarities in Zach Garnett in that fashion. But Jeff Levy, he's been in some pretty big spots. I mean, Oklahoma is no small program, obviously coming from Oklahoma as a – kind of a player slash coach he got hurt and started his coaching career he's been in some big programs what's the uh is he ready to step into sec life well having with him he's had some more experience being in the sec even if it's not leading a team um however with what he's bringing to the table the Oklahoma Sooners, they averaged 502 yards per game last, this past season. So we see that he knows the ins and outs and like what the team needs to accomplish in order to get it. And so there may be, if we face Tennessee and when we do face Ole Miss, there may be some tension with the other coaches, depending on how they parted years ago. However, what we'll see is that he may even give it a good, cleaner game with knowing the other coaches. However, on top of that, with Oklahoma, I mean, we saw where he kind of had a little controversy with the Baylor coach and everything, but we'll see how that plays out, and hopefully he's cleaned himself up. 
Okay, as a woman, I'll, I'll put you in the fire, just kind of put your feet to the fire. Uh, how does that make you feel, both as a, a sports reporter? Obviously, that you know, but, but you're, <laughs> you wake up every day as a woman first. So, like, that, how does that kind of uh, make you feel as, you know, you had to be objective as a reporting, reporting on Starkville, reporting on Mississippi State, but obviously a little support there. You go to school there. How does that make you feel? Do you feel maybe disrespected at all? Does it matter? Is it lo long ago in the past to where, okay, you know, learned your lesson? What's the deal? For those who don't know, he was on the Baylor staff during the Art Bryles kind of scandal, the sexual assault allegation scandal that kind of doomed Art Bryles' coaching career. Now, Jeff Levy wasn't really prominent in that but he was named in one of the lawsuits as one of the uh one of the alleged victims went to and named jeff levy saying i said this happened and he did nothing now obviously that was a while ago so yeah i'll just open it up to you as a sports uh, someone who follows sports as a woman daily uh and as a mississippi state student what's the what's the feel there it does make some nerves arise knowing that someone with that past is coming. However, I truly, as a person and a moral person also, hope that he's past that and that that's all in the past and that what he's coming with is not that baggage with him, but instead trying to have a new start in Starkville, getting only focusing on just the team and coaching a team and nothing outside of that. All right, so he's 39 right now. He's 39. He's going to turn 40 uh, in January, so just a couple of months away from turning 40. During the time at Baylor, that was 08 to 2016. So what's that run us? That runs us a little over 10 years ago. So he would have been 26. He would have been 26 through 31 or so. Yeah, is that about right? That eight years. He would have been 26 through 34. Uh, that, that, that's, that, that range. Uh, so, yeah, I mean – I'm right at 34. Hopefully I will continue to learn and develop uh, and treat everyone fairly and honestly and well. Hopefully he will grow from that moment at Baylor. I kind of feel like that's a uh, learning experience. That was his first major job, first major college job. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully a one-time thing and we won't even see that anything like that arise instead. We'll Absolutely. Just see Absolutely. Coaching. All right. So uh, I talked to Justice Sample last week about Will Rogers transferring uh, what's the uh, Mississippi State feel? What's Will Rogers mean to Mississippi State? And what's going to be the next step for, okay, we're losing our highly thought of quarterback, uh, going to have to replace him. Is it going to be transfer portal for, 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 for Jeff Levy? Or is it going to be a uh, recruiting, re recruiting train? Or is there somebody waiting in the wings to take over for Will Rogers? Well, with Will Rogers, what we see is he has been our lead quarterback for multiple years. And with him being from Mississippi, Mississippi native, I mean, this is his home. So seeing him go, while it is sad, the fan base really isn't that sad because he did make a lot of mistakes on the field. So there was even chance uh, from the student section wanting to put other quarterbacks in, asking for Mike Wright to go in instead, multiple games. And so with him gone, it may even give us a step up. And however, we do have Mike Wright training to be our, maybe our QB one. We're probably still on the lookout for a new recruit just to have another backup. And because we do have Chris Parson, but what we need is a strong quarterback who can lead us, who can complete most of his passes, who can run the ball. We need a quarterback who can get the job done. So looking from there, we may be looking at a transfer rather than a recruit. And while the team and the school wishes Ro Will Rogers the best, we may not we may see him go to maybe a smaller school and not necessarily another in this conference. All right, we're hearing some Kentucky talk as well for Will Rogers. So we'll see where he goes. But it sounds like it was a. Uh the right time for everyone to kind of part ways and move on. Your boy, Chris Parson, he's up from your neck of the woods. You're a Nashville lady. He's up from uh, Brentwood, Tennessee. And I'm looking through the Mississippi State recruiting class. No quarterbacks committed so far. Uh, it'll be a bit, it'll be a tall task. Jeff Levy going to have to get somebody in. Uh, that's the beauty of the transfer portal. You can get somebody in very, very quickly that's ready to play right away and make you very competitive. Yes, so it's it's nice to see um, a player from near where I'm from. That's really fun, um, especially you know people that went to school with him that say positive things about him. So we'll see him grow as a quarterback. But having that transfer portal is very convenient. That way we can go ahead and grab a quarterback who can get the job done. 
when everybody wants to play in the SEC, Jeff Levy will, uh, you know, get his ducks in a row. He's already retained two coaches. He retained Chris Rump, and he's retained uh, defensive lineman, uh, defensive line coach David Turner. So he's already filling out that coaching staff. Uh, so we'll just see how he does. It's a it's a pivotal next month of the season, next month for uh, for Jeff Levy getting the coaching staff in order, securing the recruiting class for the first of uh, what December twentieth is that early signing date, and then starting to hit that transfer portal very hard. Is excitement kind of great? Growing in Starkville as we move away from football? Yes, the the air of sports is very anxious here. I mean, we've seen a lot of positive things happen with volleyball and although soccer, their season ended, they did make it to that first round of the tournament and that was really special for the team. So we're seeing these other smaller sports come about too and each team is working hard to get the job done. All right, so let's talk basketball. Basketball, six and one, but oh my goodness, Ken- Kenzie, Mississippi State joins Alabama in taking a loss in the SEC ACC challenge. Alabama losing to Clemson, Mississippi State losing to Georgia Tech last night. What did you learn about the Bulldogs last night playing the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets? Well, we started out getting very little, even a little cocky about how the team was doing, having performing so yeah, well. Yeah, right. top twenty-five. Absolutely sweeping other teams so we were very hopeful for this win and we had everyone getting super excited I mean we getting ranked was really special and being undefeated was really special and it made the entire campus excited it made the team excited and made fans excited so it was really nice but then we had that loss to Georgia Tech which isn't creating a lot of buzz because we still have all these non-conference games to get through. I mean, the season has just barely made its way. We haven't even started with our conference game. So hopefully this was just one loss and that we'll get back up and be able to sweep the next opponent. All right, Mississippi State still has uh, Southern on its schedule, has holiday hoops giving in Atlanta against Tulane. That'll be fun next Saturday. We'll uh, go to Rutgers at the end of the month before getting started with conference play. All right, so you've seen them for like three weeks now, just still, as you said, in the infancy of basketball season through just the early bit and not having Tolu Smith. You've got the second year of Chris Jans. How is the feel of year of 2023? I mean, obviously, look, you take the loss, but it's just one, one, one game. Alabama lost on Friday and on Tuesday. It's been kind of a rough couple of days here in Crimson Tideland. What's the feel of, okay, Mississippi State, here's what we can be this year uh, for the basketball program? Well, we're hoping to see the basketball program grow. Jan's had a very successful season last year, and so we're hoping to see that again with him, with it being his second year. We're hoping that he can even take us further than he did last year. And although we don't have Tulu, we're kind of hoping that these other guys can have chances to show what they've got to see if they can get the team, lead the team. And so hopefully we'll get Tulu back. I haven't heard anything recent about his condition, but having him back would definitely help if even if it's when we start conference games. All right, Kenzie, tell everybody what you're doing at Cowbell Corner. What is something that we haven't talked about today that you're very excited about or something that's coming up that you're thinking that everybody should know about as far as Mississippi State Athletics or Cowbell Corner? Right now we're looking really close at that Um, coaching changes and um, getting to see where the coaching staff will land for the next season. And we're also looking deep into seeing as soon as this recruiting class is ready, we're ready to share that with all the fans. Absolutely. December 20th, Kenzie, is the early signing date. So uh, our next couple of conversations will revolve around recruiting. We'll talk about recruiting some of the guys that are coming up. Daniel Hill, that's the name to watch out for that both Alabama and Mississippi State fans are fighting over. The Meridian Mississippi running back has been considering Alabama, Mississippi State, Tennessee, Kentucky, South Carolina. He's all over the place, but it seems like Mississippi State and Alabama are his leaders. So keep an eye out for Daniel. Hill will keep an eye out on the Mississippi State recruiting class. They've got uh, right now 24-7 has them as the 42nd overall recruiting class. Got to bump that up, Jeff Levy, if you want to be competitive in the SEC. And we'll keep an eye out on both the uh, women's basketball and men's basketball program as we continue. Kenzie, tell everybody where they can follow you and everything that you're into. I know you are about to wrap up the semester in Starkville. Tell everybody where they can follow you and we'll keep keep chatting on CalbellCorner.com. 
Well, thank you for having me. The best ways to connect is through Twitter at Kensington Brand 2. And also, if you want to follow my LinkedIn, Kenzie Brandenburg is the name. But other than that, it's that's the main focus for sports. Right there, Kensington Brand 2 on the X slash Twitter machine. And you can hear her each and every time that she joins us on Cowbell Corner at cowbellcorner.com. Thanks so much, Kenzie. Have a great day. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. That's Kenzie Brandenburg. And you guys want to check her out on cowbellcorner.com. It's Mississippi State Loot. There's nothing better for sports media than a coaching search. So they found their coach, Jeff Levy, offensive genius, offensive guru. He's going to find uh, the rest of his coaching staff, fill out his coaching staff. Mississippi State has two of his uh, of its 10 assistant coaches already set in place. Like we said, the number two overall recruiting class going to have to do some work on that over the next month and change. It's going to have to hit the transfer point very hard if you're Mississippi State. If you're a program like Mississippi State, like a Missouri, like an Arkansas, you use the transfer portal to supplement the roster and we'll see how Jeff Levy and company does that. But we appreciate Kenzie Brandenburg joining us on the Joe Gaither Show right here on Cowbell Corner and on Bama Central and on BamaCentral.com. We'll keep things rolling right here on the Joe Gaither Show on a Wednesday on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and on Amazon, on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitter.